In the last video, we had a lengthy discussion about what hotspots are and why they make sense. Uh, in this uh, video, we will explore what hotspots do when they are underneath the ocean floor and when they are underneath the continental crust. But first, let's define what a hotspot is. And again, I'd like you to kind of learn this stuff intuitively and not uh, depend on definitions in the book. So let's make our own um, definition. Uh, simple definition. So hotspot is a point in the asthenosphere, right? So this is important. It's not in the crust, it's not in the lithosphere, but in the asthenosphere. That is unusually hotter than the rest of the asthenosphere, right? And I will modify this it's not just a point but really a permanent point a relatively permanent point so it's not moving it's it's a it's somewhere in the stenosphere it's not moving a, a relatively permanent point in the stenosphere that is unusually hotter than the rest of the stenosphere resulting to the melting of the lithosphere above it Okay, that's our uh, own personal definition of a hotspot. It's a spot, it's a permanent point in the asthenosphere that is hotter. Even if the asthenosphere is already hot, it's, uh, it's even more hot than the rest of the asthenosphere. And meaning if it's more hot, it melts the lithosphere. It punches through the lithosphere even without convergent boundaries. So by just by the, the sheer heat, it melts the lithosphere. Okay, so what if a hot spot, okay, is underneath an oceanic floor? So if this is the ocean floor, and uh, let me draw the sea water. So this is the ocean oceanic water. Obviously, because the hot spot is hot enough to melt the oceanic floor, they would cause the materials to punch through, and therefore you create underwater volcanoes okay so you create underwater volcanoes but then these underwater volcanoes because of the hot spot would be more active it's even more active than normal volcanoes that are created in divergent boundaries because remember a hot spot is something that is hotter than the rest of the stenosphere so this piles up piles up piles up materials and then the material spoke out of the water and you create a volcanic island. Okay? So underwater volcanoes become volcanic islands. Okay? <laughs> and then after that, crucial to our definition of a hotspot is the idea that a hotspot is permanent. But remember, the lithosphere is moving. Remember, in plate tectonics, we believe that the lithosphere brick segments are moving. But the stenosphere, the hot spot in the stenosphere is permanent. So what does it do? It means that this is the plate. Hot spot is underneath it. It creates volcanoes here. When the, hot, when the lithosphere moves, now the hot spot is not aligned with a volcano that was created here. So the plate slides. So therefore, since the hot spot is permanent and the plate moves, so it gets displaced. Okay? So meaning over time, this hot spot will not be underneath this island anymore. It will be underneath here. So what happens? Again, it creates an underwater volcano. And then it spews out material. It creates a volcanic island. Right? And then this lithosphere moves again. So the hot spot is displaced again. It creates underwater volcanoes that create volcanic islands. So therefore, you repeat this process long enough, you have a chain of islands. Okay, you have a chain of volcanic islands. 
And sometimes we call this a volcanic island arc. Because again, the surface of the earth is curved. So you have a line, it's an arc, technically speaking. So a volcanic island arc. Right? And as this progresses, so you have an island, the first island, second island created, the third island created, the fourth island created, the fifth island created, the sixth island created, because this whole thing progresses. But remember, this island popped out of the water surface, right? Because of the hot spot. But when the hot spot is now displaced, it's now underneath here, it has no supply of materials anymore. So when the rains come, when the rains come, the erosion brought by the rain will kind of slowly degrade the island, right? It will wash off the materials of the island. So as time passes by, you would see a pattern. And that pattern is the island will become smaller. And the island where the hot spot is aligned to is always the island with the bigger with 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 it's the bigger biggest island and if you look at the other islands that are created in the chain they become smaller and smaller and smaller the further you are from it and in fact it might be that in some cases the islands degrade so much that they do not anymore poke out poke out of the water they are they submerge under the water and then they are called a sea mount or a sea mountain and not an island anymore so therefore these volcanic islands can sometimes become sea mounts just because they are degraded over time because of the erosion because of the rain so what is the pattern here the pattern here is you always get a chain of islands and the island on top of the hot spot will always be the biggest island and because it's underneath the hot spot the magma supplies the magma supply uh, the hot spot supplies magma to it so you will always see an active volcano here in that island whereas in these islands you will see dead or remnants of dead volcanoes okay and then after that you might even see seamounts before the smaller islands okay and again that's because of that process so let me let me repeat in case that has become convoluted so what you do is you create island when the hot spot is here you create island number one this is the water here then when the hot spot is displaced you create island number two then island number three then island number four but take note when the hot spot is already underneath island number two because there's no magma material supplying this this island will degrade will become smaller and so you always see that pattern and sometimes even the islands become so small that they do not they cease to become an island anymore they become seamounts so again you have a chain of volcanic islands and seamounts and the chain is always always follows the same pattern the pattern is this one will always be the biggest it is underneath the hot spot and it has an active volcano as you go further, you, the island becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, and they will contain remnants of dead volcanoes. Okay? So that is the, um, that is the pattern that you can find when you have a hot spot underneath the ocean. Okay? So if we... Um, <coughs> Look at the picture now of how Hawaii was created. This is what we see. Right? You have a hot spot. 
And right now, the hot, that hot spot is underneath the, ma the main island of Hawaii. But you can bet that somewhere in the past, that hot spot was underneath Maui, and then underneath Molokai, and then underneath Oahu, U Oahu, Oahu, and then underneath Kauai. And we know that because scientists can age the rocks in these islands. And if you look at the rocks in Kauai, they are 3.8 to 5.6 million years old. In Oahu, Oahu it's 2.2 to 2.3 million years old. In Molokai, it's 1.3 to 1.8. In Maui, it's 0 0.8 to 1.3. In the mainland Hawaii, the, the oldest rocks are 0.7 million years old. So therefore, again, this gives you the theory that that hot spot must have been underneath Kauai, but then the plate moved. So it's now underneath Oahu, then Molokai, then Maui, then Hawaii. Okay? So giving credence to what we uh, believe is what's happening in hot spots. Right? And then, um, how about the seamount, sir? What? Uh, if you look at this, that's the mainland Hawaii, Molokai, Oahu. If you extend it way beyond that, you have the northern island, Hawaiian islands. But these Hawaiian islands are smaller because these are even older islands. Okay? These are even older islands. And if we look at, if we extend that, if we extend, if we extend beyond that, you could even see the seamounts, okay? And let me just pull up one of the images here. This one is the chain created by that hotspot. This is mainland Hawaii. Sorry, let me transfer. Let me transfer off the top. This is mainland Hawaii, Molokai. Uh, Maui, Molokai, and then Oahu. But these are islands, smaller islands, and then these are seamounts. So these are not islands, you can't see them on the top of the surface, but these are like seamounts on the surface of the earth. I mean, on the surface of the ocean floor, right? Underneath the seawater. So what is that telling us? It's telling us that the Pacific Plate is really doing this that the pacific that the hot spot was underneath this here underneath here and then the pacific plate moved that way so that it creates like a line of seamounts that you see here and then it changed direction the pacific plate's movement changed when it was in here it became like this so it moved like that downwards then when it got to be here it moved sidewards creating the sort of l shape okay and that l shape is what you see here right so these are a series of seamounts 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 and then smaller small smaller more smaller islands smaller islands and then smaller 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 and then bigger islands and the biggest island mainland of hawaii has the active volcano all of these other islands have remnants of dead volcanoes even the seamounts have remnants of dead volcanoes because again they were created in the past and uh, just to contrast it with our concept of convergent of volcanoes creating volcanic islands uh, i mean convergent boundaries creating volcanic islands it's different because when you have a convergence so you, you have plate number one and then you have plate number two subducting under it. What happens is this melts and so you create underwater volcanoes here. And then obviously you create a trench here. You create a line of volcanoes. So this is still a line of volcanoes. But the difference is this plate underneath uh, goes underneath the other plate. It melts. But the melting happens at the same area. At the same, sorry, at the same period, same time. So therefore, the volcanoes that are created here, 
the islands that are created here are relatively same age because it's the same process when the plates of ducks you have melting you bubble up materials the materials become volcanic islands and eventually become islands so here the age difference between the islands that are created are relatively the same it's different in hot spots because in hot spots you can really see that these are these is the youngest and then older 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 and then this is the oldest here okay and you cannot cheat that you cannot just make that up you can't make up that evidence that evidence is there in the seafloor you can age the rock through other scientific techniques the age of the rocks do not lie to you so they are really these are really created earlier these are created later and the mainland of hawaii is the just the latest location where the hot spot is so meaning if we fast forward history through hundreds of millions of years in the future there will be another island adjacent to the mainland of island of hawaii if the plate movement of pacific plate still continues to be in that direction so again the pacific plate moved kind of upwards and it kind of moves sidewards, creating this L, L uh, scar, so to speak, in the ocean floor. And again, I find that fascinating because you cannot cheat that. And therefore, it's really a proof that plate tectonics really uh, happen. Uh, plate really do, plate tectonic plates really do move. And if ever you were wondering, um, really, Pangea was there? continents were moving what are the evidence that we have there this is one of the evidence right which is the scars created by hot spots now why didn't we mention that as one of the evidence for uh the movement of the plate sir when we when we discussed about the theory because when we discuss about the theory we only presented like shape of the continents the coal deposits fossils as the evidence well this is because this is not an independent this is not an independent um evidence because if you think about it the concept of hot spots is a concept proposed by plate tectonic theory so if you present hot spot as a proof that plate tectonic theory is true then you're you're doing a circular you're doing circular reasoning you are proposing hot uh hot spots as a as a concept in plate tectonic theory but then you're using the hot spot as a evidence to prove that plate tectonic theory is, th is true so so that's why we don't list that as one of the evidence because it's not independent but if you think about it it's a very solid evidence because again you can't cheat that scientists cannot just make these things up scientists do not cannot just go to the ocean floor and invent and and and, and i mean like line up rocks there as evidence to to fake so to speak the evidence you can't do that that is an irrefutable fact that is an irre irrefutable um, evidence that there is really something that happened in the past right so that is what happens to a hot spot when it's underneath an oceanic floor so again it creates underwater volcanoes which eventually develop into volcanic islands and then the hot spot moves creates another island here the hot spot moves creates another island here so we get a series of islands, but unlike the islands in convergent boundaries, these islands are different ages. And then the islands that the island that is underneath the hot spot will always be the biggest island because it has not eroded yet, and it always has the active volcano. The other islands might have remnants of dead volcanoes. And then these islands might even subside and become seamounts. So in reality, you will see a series of seamounts. And then series of smaller islands that become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Then the last island is always the biggest. The last island will always have the active volcano. All of these islands and sea will have remnants of dead volcanoes. That is what a hot spot does when it is underneath an oceanic floor. In the next video, we will explore what happens to a hot spot when it is underneath a continental plate.